Gina. Look, I got the June Bargain Bead Box. And um, I do, I promise, I have some tutorials on the way. But I got this today, so I thought I would open it. And, of course, this is the Bargain Bead Box. It's $17.95 a month. If you subscribe and you put in the code GGC2, you will get $2 off your first box if you're a new subscriber. I'll put all that in caption for you. But this is the Bargain Bead Box. First, it comes with a... Um, nice little introduction page here tells you about your beads and this one is um, deep warmth of antique copper tones in this month's colorful selection and mystic finishes so on and so forth you can read all about that and then you get a coupon for the sister store bead box bargains and you can enter your creations in a contest and then on the back there's the shipment identification key. Each bag is numbered, and you can look to the corresponding number on the page and figure out what you've got. So let me open this up, see what's inside here. Comes in a bag instead of a box. Most of us are familiar with this by now. And I like to just go ahead and put them in order, and then I'll show you what I've okay, got. Okay, so I'm ready. Number one is a 15-inch strand of 8mm electroplated lava stone beads, rainbow iris. I like lava stone. I think it's cool. And these are really neat because, um, let me rearrange my camera a little bit and mess up my bead mat. Oops. Okay. These are really cool. They have all kinds of different colors on them. I really like that. That's really nice. I'll make something out of that. I just, I like natural stone beads. They're fun to play with. Number two are some ear wires in the copper tone. Number three is one meter of 5.7 times 4.8 millimeter steel Figaro chain. So let me see, I'll show you. One meter is a long amount too, so. So there's quite a bit of chain here. That's a nice chain. I like that. And then we've got number four. Eh, if I can get this back in here. There we go. Number four are some jump rings, and it looks like there are several different sizes in here. So we've got one meter, or I'm sorry, five grams of mixed four to ten millimeter copper finish steel jump rings nickel free we can use those yes yes always good jump rings five is um, 100 piece approximately 100 piece strand of four millimeter crystal bicone metallic rainbow iris and that's what those look like nice and sparkly and then we have Number six, which is a 10 piece, 18 by 11 millimeter glass pendants, blue iris, leaf pendants. I like leaf beads. Oh, those are pretty. Looky, looky. How pretty. Yes, I like those. Number seven is, these look like little cuboid beads that I used um, in a couple of my tutorials before. And this is number seven, 24 piece, four millimeter cylinder beads, blue, green, iris. And these look a lot like cuboids. They are the same thing. Really pretty. You'll like these beads, these are fun. And so that means we'd go to the sister store and get some more of them. Uh huh, we could. Okay. And then number eight. Looks like we have some bead caps here. This is 12 piece, 8 millimeter fancy swirl bead caps. Yes, they are. Look at that. Isn't that just amazing? Then we have got, that's eight, we got nine. Nine is 12 piece, 10 millimeter frosted smooth crystal oval beads, aqua blue iris. Oh, those are cool. Those are really cool. I like it. That's what I like about this box. You get all kinds of different weird things that you might not normally pick out or see or whatever. And then you can just create all kinds of different things with them. I like that. Number 10 are 
two piece. Well, it looks like I got four pieces, but it says two piece, 25 by 22 millimeter chandelier drops. I got four of them. I'm special. And then we are going to look at number 11, which is 7.5 inch strand of eight by six millimeter crystal rondell beads, frosted rainbow iris, and I cannot open the bag. Let's see. There we go. Number 11. Oh, those are pretty. I like those. What you think? What you think? Okay. And then, I think I'm going a little stir crazy, guys. Just getting weirder by the moment. Then we have number 12. This is a weird looking thing. Let's see. Approximately 45 millimeter electroplated texture Jasper pendant. That is very different, I will say that. And get it out of here so it's double wrapped. Let's get it out of here so I can see what it looks like in real life. Though it doesn't want to come out. Now that's that's different. Yes, it is. Hmm. Okay. Now that look kind of cool with these though, I must say. Now we are going to number 13, and 13 is hook and eye clasps, and you know, these are cool, but I always worry that they're not going to work right. Let me see. Oh, these are a little bit better. Yeah, these would work. Oh, those are pretty cool. Okay, and those are a nice copper tone. Got all this mystic and copper tone stuff. It's very pretty. Number 14. Oops, I missed a, I missed a piece. Put it away or I'll never find it again. Alright, number 14 is 10 grams, 6.5 millimeter fancy bicone spacer beads. I like these. These are cool. Let me get you closer so you can see what those look like. Those are really cool. Of course, I like metal beads. They just... I just like them. I don't know why. I haven't evaluated myself about that, but I like them. Number 15 is five piece, approximately eight by 13 millimeter electroplated natural quartz crystal beads. Those are different. That's pretty cool. Yes, yes. Huh. Electroplated quartz crystal. Who would have thunk? Okay. 16. 16. There's more in this box than usual, too. Usually it's around 17 things. There's 20 in this one. 40 piece, 4 millimeter. No, 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 no. Number 16. 32 by 37 millimeter chandelier focal. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's kind of cool. And then we have got number 17 and this is 40 piece 4 millimeter corrugated spacer beads let's see what these look like because they're metal too oh yeah I like these I used to use these little they always looked like little pumpkins to me I like them so that's good and then number 18 7.5 inch strand 10 millimeter crackle agate beads dyed heated violet Oh, these are cool. Not bad. Not bad at all. And then we have number 19. This is 20 piece, 6.5 millimeter crystal fancy pyramid beads, light peach. Pyramid beads. Hmm? Oh, coolism. I like these. Look at that sparkle. Let me get you close so you can see the shape of them. They really are cool. Now, that I like, and that is just, we're going to have to use that. That's just going to have to happen. And then we have number 20, which is 5 grams, 35 millimeter steel head pins, antique copper finish, and I'm not going to open those. You can see they are head pins. So now I have to make something. Okay, so I truly have no idea what I'm going to do, but I kind of, well, I kind of have an idea, but... We're going to see how this turns out. I have got this class from a previous bargain bead box, and I have 
um, taken it out and used it because I think those hook ones for what I'm going to design are going to be a little bit big. This might even be a little bit big. But I've got a clasp. All you need is a toggle clasp. I'm going to use some of the jump rings that came in this box and I'm going to use the leaf pendant beads and some of the chain. I've cut about 12 inches of chain here so far. This chain doesn't seem to open. When I try to open it, it's it's um, soldered closed on each link. So I cut the chain and I just made sure I ended on one of the big links because these have a big link and a little link and a big link. So I ended on a big link. And then I have decided that I am going to use the big jump rings, the 10 millimeter jump rings here, and open a jump ring and just slide it on the hole of the pendant bead just like this and then close the jump ring. But first, before I close it, I want to slide it on this very last big link in my chain. So I've just put it on the very last big link and then I'm going to close it. Let me see if I can find another pair of pliers somewhere here. I got a big mess on my desk. Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. I will admit it at this point. I'm going to close this. These are kind of thin jump rings, so make sure you get them closed nicely. And that's just, you do that by just twisting them. So if you want to open it, you just grab a hold of one side and then the other side and twist. And when you close, you twist it back. And I'll show you that again with an actual jump ring and do it right. Mm -hmm. Now I've already put a jump ring on this one so I'm going to go ahead and open it. So I just twisted it open and then I'm going to go to the next big link and I'm going to put it on one side of the big link here and close it. And then I'm going to pick up another big jump ring and I'll show you actually how to do this right this time. Jeez Louise. Okay, so I've got my jump ring and I like to, especially when they're big, put quite a bit of the side in my chain nose pliers. Then I've got my flat nose pliers and I just twist it open just like that. And then I'm just going to slide it on another one of these big leaf beads here. And then on the same ring that I put my last one on, I'm going to go on the other side. So we'll use the little link on the chain as a divider. So I have this one on this side of the little link. Now I'm going to put this one on this side so that it just hangs really nice for me. So I've got it over here on my link. And then I just twist my jump ring shut and I like to kind of shake it, make sure that they line up really well. And like I said, these are thin jump rings, so they'll pull open easy. So you got to make sure you get them shut pretty nicely. Now, I've got three leaf beads. Let me back up on my pendant like this. I think I might go ahead and put two more. Let's see. Or maybe even more. I don't know yet. Like this. Yeah, I think I will. I'll go up on the next big link and put... I want to see how these are going to hang. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and put a couple more. These hang pretty nice. Make sure you don't twist your chain because you need to know what sides to put your, be your um, pendants on. So we're going to open another jump ring and I'm going to skip this little chain and go into the this little link and go into the big link again. Go ahead and put, whoops, I need to use a big jump ring. I'm using the 10 millimeter jump rings in the package. So I need to use that, slide it on, make sure I ha actually have a 10 millimeter. Yeah, I think I do. Slide it on and close, or slide it on my chain and then close it. And 
and one more. I'm going to keep it straight so I can see where I placed my last one so I can make sure that I place them on either side of the link so that they lay nice when I pick it up. So another big one. And then let's put it on the other side of this link. Now I just have a cluster of leaves for my pendant. And now, let's see, I think I'm going to take one of these big jump rings. I'm going to go ahead and cut my chain right here. And um, let's see, I'm going to count up one, two, three, four big links. Let's see if I want to do that. No, actually, I just want to leave it on there and I'm going to open a about six millimeter jump ring. And I'm going to slide it on that link. Let's see. One, two, three, four big links. And then I'm going to slide this jump ring on this link, uh, link of the chain. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. And then close this. Because like I said, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just doing. Just doing. Now. See? Get over there. I have a jump ring right here. Stay there, you thing you. And this will all, when I pick it up, it'll hang correctly. But I want it just like that. And then, because I'm going to make kind of an asymmetrical type necklace, I might even go ahead and put a couple more leaves on here. I think I'll do that. Because I can put one here and one here, two on each one, because I have that much, and just make it a full length. I think that'll look prettier. So, I'm going to open another. Let me see if I can find my package of jump rings because I am running out of the big ones. So, I'm going to open this back up, get some more out, and now I can pick through and get myself. Well, that one's even bigger. Then maybe that's 12 millimeter. Um, 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 um. I don't want that big. I want that one and that one. And that one and that one and I am going to put all of these on the leaves and then I'll put them on either side of these two links just like I did down here and I'll be right okay, back. So I put two more of the leaves on and I took off that jump ring that I put on because I am going to go ahead and cut this chain on the small link right here so I'm going to leave with three um, well two bigger links and cut the chain right here on the small link and remove it and then I'm going to take this big jump ring this 12 millimeter one I have in here you can use if you don't have one you can use whatever size you want I just want kind of a big one here and I am going to take my very last link on this little chain and I'm going to slide it on this one just like this And I'm not going to close it yet because I want to put my chain back on here. So on this side, I'm going to slide this chain back on. And that's of the original 12 inches I cut off my meter of chain. And I've got this here. Now, I will, on this end, I will put my clasping on by using, I don't know, I'm going to use one of these smaller jump rings here see if that'll fit on my clasp it should I'm going to open it slide my clasp on and then put this on my very last link here I want this necklace to be a little long of course you can cut your chain any size you want and I will measure this where it hangs and all that when I'm done so you'll know okay so now I've got this side of my necklace the way I want it and now I think that I have to figure out what kind of beads I want to use. Maybe I'll use the lava beads with this or I'll use these. Maybe I'll use those. 
and I'm going to build myself some links for this side. So this will be an asymmetrical necklace. We'll have a real nice little thin chain on this side and then something decorative on this side. So um, let me make a decision and I will be back okay. and show you what I've done. So, this is my big mess here. I am going to string some lava beads or something on this side. I haven't decided quite yet what. But the way I'm going to do this is I've added some size 1 crimp beads because I am using size 7 beetle on which is a very fine beading wire but I'm using that because of the color I it's satin gold it's closer to um, copper than anything else I have so I'm going to use it I'm going to use size 1 copper crimp beads and I'm just going to use my needle nose or my long nose pliers to squeeze the crimp tube I'm not going to use a crimp tool so what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these smaller, about four millimeter round head um, head pins. Yeah, sure, jump rings. And I'm going to make sure that it's closed nice and tightly. So I'm just going to close that the best I can. And I'm going to use it as my link. And later I'll open this jump ring here and shove and put it on so that I don't lose my stringing on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up one little size one crimp bead. Now you don't want it to fall too far down your wire because you don't want to use all your wire up. Though I cut a pretty long piece of my wire so that I have enough to work with. Then I am going to drop this jump ring on the wire and then I'm going to go back through my jump ring or my crimp bead. and hopefully I can make these long fingernails work way too long. I'm going to move my crimp bead up. I'm going to trap that jump ring pretty close. I don't need any movement in my loop so I'm just going to trap it really close. Let me get you really close so you can see what I'm doing. I have a crimp bead here. It's really close to the jump ring. I'm just going to go ahead and squeeze it and crimp it closed and make sure it's secure. That was pretty secure. Now, I can do my stringing. I'm going to cut this down a little bit. I'll leave enough to go through my first bead. And then I think I'm going to use a metal spacing bead first. So I'm going to pick up one of these um, corrugated copper beads and I'm going to slide it on. Let's see if that will go over this wire here on this end. If not, you can just cut it flush, but the way I've crimped it, I really would like to retain a little extra space just for strength. Just like that. Now if you got a little extra hanging out, you can just cut that off. This is so thin I can cut it with my scissors, hopefully. I'll just move it back and cut it a little shorter. So I don't want it to push my beads around. There we go. Now that fits over that little extra piece of wire. And I'm just going to um, see what I want to do. I think what I would like to do is use some of those little cuboid looking beads, these, because they match my leaves pretty nicely. I'm going to start with a few of those on my strand, and then I think I'll break it up with some lava beads or something. And I'll just string this until I have the length I want, and um, I will attach it to my necklace. I'll attach an uh, end piece, crimp the end off, and put a clasp on and I will have an asymmetrical necklace. So I'm going to put a few of these on. See how they look with those? Yeah. So I'm going to go ahead and string this side. I'll come back and show you what okay. I did. So I went ahead and strung my cuboid beads and my um, lava beads and the corrug corrugated copper beads. And let me get you close up so you can see what it looks like. 
It's really a pre very pretty combination. It's going to look really pretty with these leaf beads. Um, I'll show you the whole thing in a minute. So what I've done is I've stretched out my chain like this. And I strung until putting this jump ring right here where it would connect. That this is just a jump ring short on this end. Could you so you can see it. Just a little jump ring short because I'm going to go ahead and put my clasp on. I put a jump ring on it and closed it and I'm going to attach to the jump ring just for movement and so I can pull it tight like I did this one and my ends will pretty much be the same. So I'm going to move this chain part aside. I'm going to take the clip off of this. I'm going to pick up my crimp bead and then I'm going to slide my wire through the jump ring on the clasp. Make sure your jump ring is closed tightly. And then go back into, and this is always, it always wants to mess with you. So let me redo this. All right. So let me get us situated. I'm going to pick up my crimp bead again, deja vu. And then I'm going to go through this jump ring. Just really make sure this jump ring is closed well. And like I said, these are thin, so they don't close as well as I'd like them to, but they, they do close tight. So then I'm going to go through this jump ring. And then I'm going to go through the crimp bead. And I'll go ahead and pull through a, a couple of these first beads here too. You don't have to, but I always do because I just prefer that. So I'm just going to go through one, I guess. That's what my wire wants to do, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to pull this really tight, close up to the jump ring. And I'm going to make sure I crimp it kind of away from the opening of the jump ring. Pull it tight so that there's not a lot of slack. You still want a little bit of movement in your beads, but you see I have no slack, but my beads still move nicely. And then I'm going to just go ahead and crimp this crimp bead closed as tightly as I can. If you're too close to the jump ring, you'll have to move back a little bit. I'm just going to crimp it closed, make sure it crimped and it's very secure. Then I will just pull this wire back over this bead, get my scissors in as close as I can because this is really thin wire I can just cut it off with my scissors. Now I have the other half of my necklace right here. I'm going to grab my necklace and I'm going to lay it out where I can see it and I am going to then grab a hold of the big jump ring and find the opening. And this jump ring is nice and thick, so it's it's a little bit different. It's easier to see the opening and open and close, and it's stiff and it's not going to move around too much. So I've opened this big jump ring on our necklace here, and I'm going to slide the other half of the necklace on it. I'm going to close it. And then what I now have, oops, that's not closed well enough, is a asymmetrical, really cute little necklace. And I will back off and, and arrange this so you can see it better. It's not one of those that lays out nice, but it'll wear really pretty. And this is about 22 inches long, so this will be in the middle of your chest. If you want it shorter, of course, you can make your chain and your um, strung part shorter. And this is what it looks like. And now I've decided I have four of those little cube-type cylinder beads, whatever they've called them. Um, I am going to put them on the head pins that came and I'm going to dangle them off either this top part of the chain here or here. So let me go make a couple loops. So actually I'll show you how to make one. Let me find the head pins they sent. Here's the head pins.
And let's see if it even fits on these beads. Sometimes they won't. These are pretty rustic looking head pins too. <laughs> kind of rough. And I am going to go ahead and pick up yeah, maybe I'll pick up one of the corrugated beads first and then I'll pick up one of these pretty little cube beads. And boy, that head pin really sticks out. I am going to grab my round nose pliers if I can find the little guys. Yes, I have a mess. I, I will freely admit that I've got things just laying everywhere right now. I'll be right back. Okay, found them. So, now, I have slid on a corrugated bead, one of the cuboid beads, and then I'm going to put, or cylinder bead, whatever, and I'm going to put my round nose pliers up tight against that last bead. I'm going to bend that over, and then I am just going to wrap it around the top. Move my wrist a little bit, just to help create the loop like this. Now it's kind of thick so you kind of have to work it pretty strongly with your hands and then I'm going to grab a hold of my loop with my left hand like this and my um, pliers. I'm going to arrange this wire or uh, parallel with the um, chain nose pliers and then I'm just going to wrap once or twice around here. And then I will just cut that wire. And tuck in the little extra piece. Let me get you close. I will get my these pliers to hold on to this. And then I am just going to use my skinnier ones to tuck that extra wire in. So it's not pokey. Be careful because you'll crush your glass bead there. It's a little pokey. And then I will make the rest of my beads. I'll, I'll make four of them just like that. And then I'll either slide it on this or I'll put it on jump rings and hook it on here. I haven't decided yet. And I will be back okay, and so show you. So what I've done is I've put two of the corrugated beads on two of them and then the one of the cuboids. And then um, one co corrugated and one cuboid on these two. And I'm going to dangle it from this loop. I'm going to put the longer ones closest to the chain uh, that holds our pendant and then the other ones out towards the outside and see what that looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my um, big jump ring here. I'm going to open it and I'm just going to pull my chains off. I'm going to drop on this side a long one and then I'm going to drop on this side the other long one. I'll hold it like this so you can see better. And then I'm going to pick up my short one and drop it on this side. And then I'm going to grab a hold of it over here and drop this one on this side. So it's like this. And then I am going to grab my necklace side that I strung and put it on this side. And then I'm going to grab my chain, put it on this side, and then I am going to close it and see what it looks like. We may hate it. We may not. We'll see. Uh, it actually looks kind of cool. Let's see if I can get my... I ended up with some leftover little pendant beads. Let's see. And get this all straightened out so you can see the basic design and I'll back off my camera I promise all right so get over there you get on there you and then we've got
Da 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 da. I'm trying to make it look like something for you guys so you, you actually can see it. And um, yeah, it's not laid out very pretty, but that's the basic idea there. And let me get you close a little bit so you can see. And that's what that looks like. And this is what the chain portion that I made looks like, or the strong portion. And when I pull it up, it looks really good. It's hard for me to show you. Maybe I'll take a picture of it on a neck uh, model if I get really ambitious. And um, that's the first project. I hope you okay, like it. Okay, so I have designed this little cute pair of earrings with the crystals that came that I said, we have to use those. We're going to make a little set with these. So um, this is a little earring I made. It's just a cute little dangle. And what I've used is an ear wire, of course. <clears throat> One of the bead caps that came, four of the crystals, and five of the head pins. So, actually four of the head pins. So, this is what we're going to do. We are going to make loops on three of these crystals. So, I'm going to show you how to do that. And get a head pin out, and we will make three crystals with um, loops on them. So just put one of your your head pins on the crystal, bend it over the top of the crystal, as close as you can get it, a kind of thick head pin, so I just get it as close as I can like this, and then cut it down, the head pin that is, cut it down to about a quarter of an inch long, just about there. And then grab your round nose pliers from the very end of the wire you cut. And just go a little ways back. You don't want a huge circle for this, but, you know, a decent size. Start to roll from the very edge of your pliers and the edge of the wire all the way around. And you can kind of judge the size of the circle on the part of the plier that you're using. So if you want it bigger, you go back towards the handle. If you want it smaller, you go back, you go towards the tip of the pliers, of course. It's only logical. And <clears throat> now I have a little loop like that. So I have three of those made. Now I want to make a head, uh, eye pin out of one of these head pins. Yes, I know there are eye pins, and yes, I know you could use one of those instead. I'm going to make one because it's going to match exactly the wire that I'm using in the in the earrings. Um, last time I made an eye, uh, a head pin out of an eye pin, and somebody was just appalled. So <laughs> this is the reason I'm doing it, is because it's going to match, and I don't have any eye pins in this wire. So I'm going to cut the head pin off like this. And then I'm going to go just a little ways up the wire, right about here, and I'm going to bend it over. And that may be a little long, but that's okay. And then I'm going to make a loop. Let me see what size I made this loop. I'm going to make a loop in this wire. It's just bending it, rolling over the part that I bent, like so. And um, my loop is a little off-center simply because I made it a little bigger than I needed to, but that's okay. Just like this, that's all you need, just a loop at the end of the wire. And then you can open this loop with your pliers, and then just drop your three that you wrapped onto that loop and then close the loop you made and now you have an eye pin with three little dangles on it and it's going to match all the rest of the stuff that all the rest of the wire and everything you're using so now I'm going to drop This one down. So I just dropped the bead cap down 
And you just want to make sure you keep your loop small enough to where your bead cap kind of covers at least the loop where the, um, on the eye pin that you made. Um, th some of the loops from the crystals can show a little bit. That's okay. And then I'm going to drop a crystal down on top of that bead cap. Like this. And then I'm going to take my pliers and place them right on top of that little um, crystal. Bend the wire over the top of my pliers. I don't want to make it a big loop, so I'm just going to go down a little ways on my pliers. And then I'm going to turn my wrist and turn my pliers up into that bend in the wire. And then bring the wire over the top of my pliers. and just bring the wire around like this until I have a loop. Make sure it's about the same size as that one. Yep, not too bad. And then I'm going to grab a hold of this. Actually, I'm going to hold this with my flat nose pliers like this. And then I will grab my chain nose pliers. And I've got to change my hands. I always do that to myself. And I'm just going to wrap this around once just to end that wire and to secure my loop. Once I get it around as much as I can, then I'll just push it down. This really isn't this hard, but you know minute you turn on the camera, things have to go haywire. Let's see if I can get that wire down. There we go, I got it. Okay, so then I will just straighten out this loop that I made. I'll open my ear wire. Slide it on my ear wire. And then close my ear wire. And now I have a really cute set of earrings. Let me back off. I hope I was in camera there. Let's see. That is a really cute little set of ear wires. And I think I'm going to make a little necklace to match. Just like a little real simple line type of necklace. Um, so... What you'll need is a piece of 24 gauge wire. I'm using this artistic wire and I'm using it in antique brass simply because I don't have an antique copper color in this. It's going to blend pretty well. So I'm going to use that and um, some of these bicone type shaped beads that came in the box. And of course some of the crystals that are left. So I'll just get all this out and show you what I'm going to use. And the chain. And then we'll make a, a little necklace out of it. Okay, this. before I make the necklace I have planned, I've decided I wanted to make a little pendant to go on it. So I'm using one of these components. And I've just opened one of the smaller jump rings and put it on the top loop here. And then I'm making some dangles for the bottom. So when I make my dangle, I just take one of the head pins. And this one I want a little longer than the other two. So I'm going to put a crystal on first. And then I'm going to put on one of the brass beads or the copper beads here. And then I'm just going to put my round nose pliers close to the copper bead right here and bend it over the top. And then I'm going to turn my wrist and put my pliers into that bend and then bring the wire over the top of my pliers. But I'm going to leave the loop I'm making open so that I can slide it on to my pendant. So as you see, it's open here. And if I need to, I can just grab a hold of it and open it a little more like that and then just slide it on here. Now this takes a little bit of patience to do this because it's kind of a pain in the butt if I may speak frankly. Now I've got it on here I'm going to grab my flat nose pliers and close that where I opened it 
Just squeeze the wire that's sticking out down onto the loop. I'm going to hold it with my um, needle nose pliers here, or my long nose and chain nose, whatever you want to call them. And then I'm going to grab my round nose and I'm going to wrap this extra piece around and you're going to drop it about 50 times and all kinds of weird stuff. But the these particular head pins are a little tougher to work with so just they're nice strong ones. Nothing wrong with that. Just You just have to really be patient with it. Work it around the best you can. And this one is a little bit tougher because I've got more beads on it so my wire is shorter. So I'm just going to tuck that in the best I can. Cut it off a little bit. Just mess with it till you get it to where it's halfway decent looking. And I'll get close and show you what that looks like. That's what that looks like. And so I'll just put another one of these here and then another crystal here. And then my pendant will be ready. Okay, so I finished my little pendant. And now I've laid out how I want my beads to look on my focal part of my necklace. And I've made sure I have a piece of wire that's just about an inch bigger on either side than I want my focal to be. And then I am going to take my round nose pliers and about an inch down, not quite, yeah, right around there. Let me make sure I have enough room. So right about here, I'm going to bend this down over my pliers, just bend it straight down like this. And then I am going to wrap a little loop. So bring it over the top of the wire. This is 24 gauge wire, by the way. So it's really easy to manipulate. So I've made a little loop that looks like this. Get your clothes and then I am going to grab my flat nose pliers and I'm just going to hold on to that little loop. Bend my wire up parallel to my pliers and then I'm just going to take a wrap or two around here. Push it up if it's a little loose, your wrap. And then just cut that off. Squeeze down my tail or tag or whatever you want to call it. And then I have one side. This will be ready to hook to my chain over here. So I will start just putting on the design that I made here. And when I get to the center point, I'll put on my pendant. So just go ahead and string all your beads on. And then there's my center one. So now I'm just going to take that jump ring I put on and slide through it. i let my pendant just, if it will, just lay there. And then I will string this side the same way. And that's what this looks like so far. Then I'm just going to take my round nose pliers, place it right up at the end of that, um, bead and then I want to make my loop about the same size as I did the other the other sides. I'm just going to turn this so I can look at it. So right about here on my pliers you can always mark your pliers so that you always get a consistent one and I'm just going to bend this over like this move up into my um, bend like this just move your wrist a little bit bring this over the top make a nice little loop 
once you have your loop, then grab your pliers, hold on to it, and take a couple wraps. And then I can cut this off and tuck in, straighten that up, tuck this in. And then I want to turn these where my chain will hook on nice. So I'll make them parallel to the bead mat here, like this. Then depending upon how much, uh, how big you want your necklace to be, you'll cut two pieces of chain on either side and you can open this up or bend it however you want it. I want mine to be pretty round like this. And I will get a couple jump rings, I'm going to cut some chain and I'm going to get a little um, clasp and I will connect the rest of the necklace. Okay, so I've cut two equal pieces of um, chain. I'm going to make my necklace about an 18 inch necklace. So I've cut two pieces that will accommodate that length for me. So you can just lay this portion out, put this on the zero on your beadboard, and then measure how much chain you want. And then get three of your small beads or your small jump rings here. I've got a lobster claw clasp and then a bigger ring jump ring, a heavier jump ring also for my clasping. So I'm just going to open the jump ring. Sure, I'll do it this way. And I'm going to put it onto the chain and then put it onto my necklace. Grab a hold of that jump ring if I can here and close it. And there's one end and then on my um, clasping I'm just going to open this end of the big jump ring. And then I will connect this chain. I'll put one of these jump rings on the clasp and put it onto the to the chain. And then I will connect this end just like I did this end. And I'll this is what this looks like. Now my chain is actually a little too long. It's I wanted it to hang right at the base of my throat. So I'll probably take an inch off either side. Um, maybe not quite that much, but I'll take a few links off either side so that this hangs kind of just right at the base of my throat and this right below it. And that is really pretty on the neck. I put it on, it's really pretty. And then I have the little earrings here. So it's a cute little set, and those are just a couple of the things that you can do. Okay, so I've decided to make a bracelet, and um, what I've done is I've used one of the large hooks that came with the um, box, and I just put on a crimp bead and went around. I'm using the size one because I'm using very fine beading wire. I'm using Beetle on 7, and I am, I've strung using the bead caps and the lava beads. And then on the very end here, I'm making it, I'm just putting one more here, see if I can find another bead cap and slide that on, just to make it the right length for me. I had to do one little extra bead here, which just lends some interest, so it's fine with me. And then I am going to, let me see how that fits. Yeah. So then to do this, I think I'm going to take, I have one little bead left that, where are you? Hmm. I don't know. This little guy right here. I am going to put this on here. And then I'm going to slide on the other end of the big eye hook thing. And 
the large N to the outside, and the smaller circle to the inside, so that it can hook on, and then I'm just going to slide my beading wire through the two beads here, the crimp bead and the end bead I put on. I got under the bead cap too, which is fine. And then I'm just going to squeeze this. And I'm going to continue making this little side one, size one crimp bead. I'm just going to squeeze it here. Make sure it's got some movement for my clasping and that it's really tight and secure. Yeah, it's secure. Cut this off. And then I am just going to continue putting a couple other things on here. So this is how this is going to work. Like this. And that's what that'll look like. I don't like that this is only one-sided because it's inevitable that it's going to flip. Um, but then again, maybe I'm using it wrong. If you guys have any ideas, let me know. But it's, it is what it is. And I think I'll continue making a few other strands on here. I'm just going to connect it the same way I did this one. And just go all the way up through here and just make several strands on my um, bracelet. Okay, so here's the bracelet I made. I just attached some chain, put the one little leaf I had left on it so that it matches this one better. Put some chain on it, made um, another strand with the Rondell crystals. And um, I really, I, I don't know about these big hooks. Uh, they're not my favorite. It's pretty. It looks really nice on there, but the way it functions, I'm not so sure. So, um, I made this bracelet. Let me show it to you. And I've made this necklace, this necklace, and this pair of earrings. And I still have quite a few things I could work with and make more with the box, but I have other tutorials I have to get to. I'm trying to put this bracelet on and um, I will come back and show you what it looks like on but um, you can do all kinds of stuff just use a little creativity and throw some pieces together it doesn't take long when you're doing stringing and attaching chain and stuff like that it's a lot faster than bead weaving and um, you can make quite a few really pretty pieces and I put both of these pieces on and they hang really well they look really pretty I really like them and I will keep them and wear them myself. So um, I will be right back and with here's the bracelet. The bracelet. Get a little closer, and you can see I could have twisted a little if I wanted the chain to be mixed in, but that's what that looks like. And I think it's pretty. It turned out nice. Like I said, this hook, it's just kind of weird. Um, this part wants to twist, and it, that could be just because I did it wrong. I don't know. But, um, that's what that looks like. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed making pieces with me and make some of your own. Have fun. Bye-bye.